Hi, my name is Mark, and this is the love of my life, Aja. After retiring from the Army in 2018, my family and I moved from the States to my wife's hometown of Szczecin, Poland. She followed me around for 18 years, so now it's only fair that I do the same for her. She runs a Polish cooking food channel and blog, and I lift the heavy things. Once in a while, she shuts down the kitchen, and we explore Poland together to find as much good food as we can. Welcome to Kitchens Closed. Hello, my hungry friends. It's Friday. It's Friday, Kitchens Closed. <laughs> and we are in... Torun! Day, day two. two! That was cheesy AF. Okay, <laughs> so today we're going to take you across the river again, and we're going to take you to where? Uh, castle. Castle. Ruins. Yep, by either the Teutonikis or the... Why do I keep forgetting this? Templars. Templars. And? Uh, uh, we're going to eat some gingerbread cookies. And we're going to eat some of the food. And we're going to... What else? There was a guy here uh, that was born and raised up in this ah. place. And his name is Nicholas Tesla. Copernicus. No, Nicholas Copernicus. Okay. So we're going to show you him. He invented the flat earth. Not him. His no, he house. didn't. His house and a statue of him. Okay, let's go. Okay. Come on, princess. Get up that hill. It's the power of the princess. The power of the princess. Can tackle any grade up to 75 degrees. That's right, she's a princess. We began our second day in Torun much like the first. We left the campsite on our beautiful bicycles, went over the river, the Vistula River that is, on our bicycles, and headed for the Old Town Square to introduce you to a couple important residents. Come on, princess! You got it, girl! <laughs> Here in Torun, there are lots of friendly people, wonderful people, wonderful things. And then there's this jackass. <laughs> jackass. Donkey. Torun is also the birthplace and childhood and grown up home of one Nicholas Copernicus. He was born 19 February in 1473 and spent his whole life here doing maths. Lots and lots of science and maths. He's the dude that figured out and first published the ideas that the sun was the center of the universe and not the earth. And that the earth went aroundy roundy the sun. And everyone else is like, nah, -uh. and he's all like, yeah, and they're like, what? So he's pretty smart. And he did all kinds of other maths too that I don't know about. But that's what he looked like according to the statue maker. And this is his house. That's bullshit. Now, Professor Igor might be right. This might be a little bit of BS. But this, here's, the, here's what's kind of handy dandy notebook about the whole thing. This is the fanciest house on the block. Now, maybe the Copernicus family was stupid rich. I don't know. But according to historical dados, this building and another house was owned by the Copernicus family during Copernicus's life. Now, he might have been born here according to this plaque, or he might have been born someplace else. They don't know for sure. They're just making it up. But it's okay. Anyway, this is a museum dedicated to Nicholas Copernicus, and you can go inside and pay them money and see things. But I don't care enough. I want sweet buns. Is it time for sweet buns? Sweet buns. Sweet buns.
She was so nice, she let us film inside the thing. We always ask mostly sometimes. <laughs> sometimes mostly. We are just across the street from where maybe Copernicus lived. Probably, Probably. Maybe. maybe. We don't know. But whether he lived here or not, the, his DNA is on, in these uh, grounds. Undoubtedly so. Undoubtedly so. I mean, maybe. Probably. Well, he lived in Torun. Uh, he did, he did, he did. It was many years ago, but, you know, no. DNA doesn't ever leave. Unless you wash it really hard. With bleach. With bleach. <laughs> That's a lot of crime shows. <laughs> All you gotta do is spread bleach on it, and the DNA goes away, it disappears. Anywho, so, travel tips. What are your travel trips? Trip, travel Tri tips for people who want tips? to come to see a major city uh, anywhere in Europe. Travel tips. Travel tips. No, we call them travel chips. Travel chips. I'm Get sorry, travel chips. I know, I'm son of a... <clears throat> I will say this, and I've said this before, and I will say it again. Traveling in June, May in Poland, although June this or May this year was kind of crappy as yeah. far as weather goes. Yeah. But June, summer hit all of a sudden, and all you see in these tourist towns, Torun is one of them, is school school trips groups with children and yep. uh, this is probably a fifth of the crowds that we we'll, would we'll see in yes, normal absolutely absolutely circumstances anyway so yeah come off season and when you want to see something in particular in a city get your butt up early and get into the city to see it if you if you, if you can get up at 7 and be in the city by 8 o'clock, you'll have the city to yourself. It almost bar none of any city. Yeah. Maybe not New York City and things like that, but like Prague, Paris. The tourists aren't going to be out yet. So, and then late at night. We were in Prague. We got done with dinner one night at like 10 o'clock at night. And we were up on this castle mount and we walked through this castle grounds all by ourselves. We had the whole city to ourselves. It was lit beautifully, it was perfect. So up early, out late, middle of the day, go back, have a hotel. No, 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 right, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay, you're okay, buddy. Um, we have a cable going across the street. <laughs> People are being very, very polite. Uh, mm. So what kind of food Mom. did you, oh, first of all. So Aja got sweet buns before we destroy it this all. This is a, um, Migdal is, uh, almond croissant. Looks gorgeous. And I have some. Uh, I will open this because I want yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's torun pierniki torunske, which are the torun gingerbreads. Mm -hmm. And there are little shops everywhere selling these, but these guys had some as well, so I bought some. Chocolate covered delicious gingerbread cookies. Yay! And they're. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they're not how you think gingerbreads are. Traditional gingerbreads or gingerbread dough is prepared weeks ahead of when they are being actually served. Oh, yeah? You make the dough, you let it rest for several days. Then you form the cookies, you bake them, and they come out like this. Hard as, Hard a, rock. as a rock. And then they rest, and they draw moisture out of the air. Oh, really? For weeks. No kidding. Pro probably not these. Probably not. Those are manufacturized. Yeah. And, and they soften by drawing moisture out of the air, and then... Voila! Did you know that? I didn't know that. You learn something new every day. Every day. One moment. The kid is texting me. Our daughter is on a school trip right now. Yeah. So she informs us of her day to days. In Italy. In Italy. They were... Today they're in uh, Venice. So another benefit of living in Europe is your kid goes on school trips to Rome, Venice. Florence, Valencia, crazy, huh? Mm-hmm.
hotel room. Okay. We've been we've been bicycleizing around this town quite a bit. Oh yeah, that's another. We had this conversation at breakfast this morning. We did. Uh, if you wanted to come to Europe, uh, on cheap. On the cheap. On the cheap. On the cheap. On the cheap. You could fly in, get yourself a used bike, mm -hmm. get some camping gear, mm -hmm. a small tent, a uh, uh, sleeping bag. You hit up this store called the Decathlon. Yeah. And they got everything for reasonable prices. Not sponsored. <laughs> Not sponsored. Yeah. And Although. They have these <laughs> campsites normally... Uh, in the city, I mean, we are just across the river, mm -hmm. as you saw. We're less than a kilometer, or that many miles, I don't know, away. Not far. Not far. Two kilometers, I think, when we m mapped it yesterday. And where we're going next, tomorrow, next week, we're in the city, camping. Mm -hmm. So, you can stay at these campsites. This one cost us 120 zloty. For two nights. For two nights and it's this much. But this is because we have a car, we have a camp for a trailer, we have a dog, there's two of us. So 120 is what is still cheap for us. Yeah, but if you have a tent, but it's cheaper. But if you have a tent, it's, you're only paying for one person and one tent. And they don't... So and they, that's going to be like $8. Mm -hmm. You can take your bicycles on almost every train in Europe. Yeah. So you can buy a bicycle for used. We're gonna brand new one. Dirt cheap, dirt cheap, guys. We've been probably whoa. less than a hotel night stay. Probably, you could probably kit yourself out fully for less than two or three nights in a hotel. There's some travel chips for you. Travel chips. What kind of food? What kind of restaurants have we seen here in Toto? <laughs> it's been pretty eclectic. It's really eclectic. We saw two kind of American style restaurants across the street from each other. One called Texas or Texacana or something. One called Louisiana. Yeah, te the Texacana one was Tex-Mex and the Louisiana was Creole. I read the reviews and they weren't fantastic. Um, oh, really? So I we had, no, they, they were mixed. Okay. They were very mixed. So you never know if one is, if some of them are done by owners mm -hmm. or if somebody got spotty service, I don't know. But I didn't come to Toro to eat Cajun food. There's always, there's a bottom latch in a, a milk bar nearby here. We drove by, we rode by. It's actually mm -hmm. over here on the street. Just when you turn right here. What's oh, a milk bar? So milk bar is a old school uh, from like 1860s started by a, this uh, milk producer to, to, offload his milk products and he would make uh, food using a lot of milk and then it turned into a little bit more and introduced meat into it but it's cheap fare uh, homely made <laughs> oh, homely. Oh, homely in the British sense where no. it's nice and warm and pleasant yes. or homely in the American mm -hmm. sense where it's ugly no, no. <laughs> done by just like Grandma's, lots of dumplings, lots uh -huh. of traditional Polish food, really cheap. Really cheap. So Nowadays, sometimes they're government subsidized, eh? Mm -hmm. For students and stuff like that. They're, they're mostly government subsidized. We'll hit one up on our next city, which next we're not week. telling you next week's tomorrow, city, next tomorrow, week. next week. Where we're going. Not this trip, though. So I've also seen Spanish food here. I've seen Sicilian. I've seen Italian. I saw Thai. Mm -hmm. Thai massage. Mm -hmm. Polish food, of course. But we'll find something else. So we're going to finish this up. And then we are off to a castle by either the Teutonic Knights or the Templars. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. <laughs> we'll look it up.
Earlier, when we were looking at the statue of Copernicus, uh, behind the building behind the statue, yeah, the children are singing, uh, is this big old building. This is the town hall. Now, it was originally built in the late 14th century um, under the orders of the Grand Master of the local Teutonic nightclub. They said, hey, we need a big old building, right? So then they did that. And ever since it's been built, it's been home to a few kings of Poland and Pomerania and Prussia have lived in there. Teutonic Knights have lived in there. One king died in there. And then in 1594, it became a museum. It was started as just a little collection of curiosities and oddities. And now it's grown into a very, very impressive collection, apparently. I haven't been inside. But according to the interwebs, it's very impressive. And it's one of the coolest, oldest buildings of this such in all of Europe. Of but a lot of places say that, like this is the coolest. Even cooler than the uh, cathedral in Kuhn? Apparently, according to these people. Yeah, the, the Cologne Cathedral is pretty impressive and hopefully someday we'll take you there too. So there it is. But now on to Teutonic or, which one is it? <laughs> I can never remember for some reason. Some castle built some by some peoples. Let's go. in Torun Castle. Torun Castle was built at the end of the 13th century by the Teutonic Knights. Now, the Teutonic Knights and the Knights Templar are an interesting group of people. They're warrior monks. And when they got done losing uh, in the Holy Land, they're like, oh my God, we got nowhere else to make uh, stuff happen. Let's go north to the pagans and teach them about Jesus with my sword. And so they did. And they came up here and they started spreading uh, Christianity around and getting rid of the pagan religions. And so they had to build, build big fortifications because, you know, some people didn't like that stuff. So, at the end of the 13th century, they built this. This is one of the first castles the Teutonic Knights builtified. Unfortunately, they weren't super popular around here. And by the end of the 14th century, early, like 1493 actually, I believe it was, the city of Torun rose up against the Teutonic Knights and pretty much just destroyed this place and leveled it. So then they got up their butts and moved to Malbork and did some stuff over there. Now Malbork Castle is interesting because it was never taken. I'm going to show you that place sometime. We were there recently with my daughter, but that was some daddy-daughter time and not for the interwebs. So let's walk around the castle and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. The new town of Torun grew together with the Teutonic fortifications protecting it. The palace's historic value comes from the fact that it was the base of the Teutonic Knights when they began their first mission to colonize pagan old Prussians, and subsequently the formation of the Teutonic state. The castle's first known function as a residence of a Teutonic commander. Little of the castle survives to the present day as it has been demolished in the centuries since with much destruction occurring during a town rebellion in 1454. The city rebelled on 14 February, and a few days later, the small Teutonic garrison negotiated a surrender. They were allowed to leave the castle and the city. Shortly afterwards, on 8 February, the castle was plundered, and then the Turin City Council decided it would be demolished to prevent the Teutonic Knights from reoccupying it. To think about, this was built in the late 1300s, okay? So if you, like this brick, all right, was put together in 13, 13, and then laid here. And, and what's always boggled my mind about this is these things took a long time to build. Some of these churches took centuries to build. So as I talked about in Stargard, as you would have a mason work his entire life on a structure and maybe never even see it completed. And that to me, that part's sad, but the, the, that it remains still is just, I find it fascinating. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel so happy that, that it's still here for us to play with. I mean, see. Anyway, let's look at the castle some more. We are now in the Comtours chamber. Are 
Do you, do, you know, do you know why? Because they were short? They were short back then. That's what I said. Yeah. Because of nutritional purposes. Right. And less to feed. Less to feed, less to eat. Okay. Where they had their, their weekly this, uh, movie show. This is, this is movie night <laughs> in the Teutonic Castle. Sorry if it's jerky, guys. Gimbley died. That's not original scares. Absolutely not. I am guessing that middle part is the remainders of a central defensive tower. It is. That, really? Yes. Yes. And so the tower was there with that thick of walls to protect the insiders as a last bastion of hope against yeah. being kiltified. Okay. And it seems to have worked because they were allowed to surrender. I thought that's where they made bread. No, ma'am. Bread oven. No, don't be ridiculous. What's down this hallway of death? No, but I want to see. The tor tor torture chamber. Oh no, I bet this is the pooping house. Oh no. Here's a rendering of what it looked like. We are currently on this bridge. Right here. So I have something interesting to say. That is, I, well, I find it interesting. This is a Teutonic castle, same as the one in Marburg. So cool. Now in Marburg, they also have. I'm sorry, this is really probably pukey. They have, I don't know if you can see this, but right here, main castle, bridge, tower. Now in the castle in Malbork, this tower is where they hold the toities, and it was their last defense. They would come across here, burn that bridge down, and then they'd hold up in the poop tower. Now this is also Teutonic Castle with this long bridge. It now, was it? Well, it was. And now it's made out of brick, but I think it might have been. It used to could be made out of wood and then used for pooping. So cool. This is that cool is an original, original hook. hook. For hanging up your water. Of course. When you're tired. Aha. Well, this is currently set up as an uh, example of torture, it is a torture devices. Chamber. So, this is a mask you wore uh, on Halloween. I want my room to be in here. Oh yeah? I want, this is my room. And here's the hemorrhoid inducer. I don't want to sit on that. I don't want to sit on that. Wow, this place is happy. Look at the size of those beams. Someone carried them up here. Yeah. They are not original. I don't know. I know. I would. I would doubt that they're original, but they are interesting. Is it food time now? All this torture chamber stuff makes me hungry. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> front of the museum of the gingerbread and you can go in and learn all about the history and eat some and there's little shops all across town uh, calling themselves Galleria of Gingerbread, Galleria Piernica or everything to get you to come in and <laughs> make you feel like they're special in some way. So make sure you roam around and find one that you like. There's a little store right behind me here that I kind of thought was intriguing. So we're going to see if we can come in and uh, buy some gingerbreads. What 
what are you, you feeling, what are you feeling for food baby i was just gonna ask you sammy's and go something on the go yeah okay. let's see if we can grab a I don't pierogi so, sandwich. Pierogi sandwich. <laughs> pierogi sandwich. Right, then we'll go pack up and move on out to the next destination for next week tomorrow. And onward, my friends. Onward, my friend. That doesn't look right. <laughs> onward, my friend. That's better. <laughs> I'm so fast. So we ran out of time in Torun. We're gonna grab some food, but it ain't gonna be all that interesting because we've already filmed what we're gonna get. Okay, Bob. Okay, Bob. We're gonna get a K-Bob and move out and drop fire and get on out of here. Okay, Bob. Okay, Bob. So they don't do a lot of sandwiches in Poland, do they? No, they don't. Like there is Subway, but other than that, there's no like sandwich no, I, don't, I don't think Subway took off here. No, it didn't really. No. It's relatively new, but... Yeah. Didn't take off. But I'll tell you, these bad boys up here, this is the food on the go for you. Okay, Bob? This is the food on the go. I'm doing a great sacrifice for you guys for eating so much because I'm not even hungry. <laughs> yeah, it's a sacrifice. These kebabs are a little bit different than the... So this one is a little bit different from stretching kebabs. Mm -hmm. This is layers of cabbage, different cabbage slaws. Yeah. And meat and sauce. Yeah. And one of the slaws look, almost looks like kimchi. Hmm? It looks like it, but it ain't it. And this is a lot. It's really good, good. actually, yeah. Kebab. This is mm -hmm. good kebab, yeah. <laughs> I do like it very much. <laughs> Look at that. Helping fellow travelers find good food. Listen, the side, we're on the side street. Doug. The main big square over there with the city hall and everything we showed you is just over there. Not far. That's not far. But get off on the side streets. Side Couple streets hundred are where yards. the food is. Side streets is where the good food is. Less expensive, less crowds. We had some of our best food in Krakow at some Italian restaurants and some other restaurants, like three blocks off the main stuff. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. And this was 30 zloty. 30 zloty. So, Nine eight dollars. Eight bucks. For two gigantic, there's no way I'm gonna mm -mm. be able to finish this. This is like three pounds of food. Yeah. Probably could have shared one. Yeah. <laughs> Although I prefer chicken. Right. And I prefer the cow or lamb. The original I think it's lamb. Probably mix lamb and mm -hmm. beef. Mm -hmm. I guess they didn't like our our advice <laughs> that much. They walked in, walked out. <laughs> it might look a little sketchy, but it's not sketchy. Sometimes they make these kebab boxes with french fries in them. Mmm. I like those a lot. I like those a lot. Super traditional Turkish food. <laughs> french fries. Mm, cabbage. So we're going to eat. And then we're going to go and pack up and get out on the move. Back across the river to Ruti. And Lucy. And Lucy. Lucy and Ruti. And we shall be off. We won't make you watch us eat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Episode, friends. Thanks for tagging along again here in Torun in the Tatastic Teutonic Tastic 
place that we went to. Did you like our travel chips? <laughs> they, were, they were awesome. <laughs> Come along next time. Tomorrow, next week. Tomorrow, next week, we're going to go someplace else. But again, we don't want to tell you. Because it's a secret. But it is a... Basically, we're going there for a daily errand. I mean, well, a task. A chore, if you will say, to this place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to polishkitchen.com for recipes for Polish food that we've had here in Poland or that you can make at home and enjoy without leaving your house. That's right. Jump onto Instagram, Polish Kitchen, and then go to www.polishkitchen.com. Click on the merch store and look at merchandise. Yeah. Maybe you'll like something and you can buy it and then, you know, you know, help us. That's right. Subscribe, please. Guys, we really appreciate all of our viewers. We really appreciate everyone who takes the time out of their day to watch us and our silliness and all that good stuff. So, thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye. Do widzenia. Terrible. That's a kind. Okay. Absolutely awful. We are here just across the street. <laughs> just across the street. Our filming. Go away. Stop texting, texting me. Mm.